first of all, we probably want to think about denary numbers. Now, the number system that we use is what we call denary or base 10. And here what we have is we have a units column, a 10, and every time we move over a column, we multiply by 10 as such. Now, what this means is that if we have, for example, this number here, what we're actually doing is we're saying we've got four thousands plus 300 plus 20 plus seven. And what we've done there is actually multiplication, seven times one, two times 10, three times 100 and four times a thousand but we can just read that as 4,327. That's all well and good, but computers use logical circuits and transistors, and these transistors have only two states, on and off. Conveniently, there's a number system called binary, which also has only two values, one and zero, so they can be used to represent on with one and off with zero. So if we look at how binary works, if you remember denary or um, base 10, we multiply by 10. In binary, as the name might suggest, you multiply by two. By being a prefix on a lot of words like bicep, a group of two muscles, or a bicycle, um, a vehicle with two wheels, um, or in this case, binary. Uh, we've also got biplane, um, binoculars, and there are obviously lots more. So. If we go here, we're gonna multiply by two each time. So this is our units column, this is gonna be worth two, this is gonna be worth four, and this is gonna be worth eight, okay? So now if we take our numbers, bearing in mind that in binary there are only two states, on and off, one and zero, we can only ever have one or zero. And we multiply in exactly the same way as we did previously. Handily, multiplying by zero and one is quite straightforward. So one times zero is zero, one times two is two, 4 times 0 is 0, and 1 times 8 is 8. You add them all together, you've got 8 plus 0 plus 2 plus 0. So we understand that 1, 0, 1, 0 in binary is actually the denary equivalent to 10. That's all well and good, except for when we get slightly larger numbers, for example, this number here, in binary, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0. If we were to calculate this, once again, we could take 64 plus 32 plus 16. I mean, I've got 0 there as well. So let's just ignore the zeros. Um, plus 4 plus 2. And if I add this up, I've got 96, 112, 116, 118. But to represent that on a computer system, we've got 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0. And when it comes to large binary numbers or long binary numbers, computer scientists decided to come up with a way of condensing this using a system called hexadecimal. Now, as the name suggests, hexadecimal, um, hex meaning six, decimal meaning 10, six plus 10 is 16. Um, effectively, what we've got here is we would actually have base one, base 16, and the next column is actually 16 times 16, which is 256. But we'll kind of ignore that for now because in your exam, you're only going to actually get two digit hex. And there's a way of converting between these um, binary, denary and hex. So say, for example, you've got a value which um, you want to represent in binary. How do we get that into hex? It's probably worth first understanding how hex works. Given that we can only have single digits, how on earth are we going to represent the numbers 1 to 15 in one column? It's simple. 1 to 9 is exactly the same as denary. So you've got 1 to 9 as normal. And then when we get to 10, we say A, B, C, D, E, and F. And just bear that in mind that A represents 10, 11, 12, D represents 13, E represents 14, and F represents 15. Okay, so let's say, for example, um, we wanted to convert the binary number which we had there, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0. The way that we would convert is we could actually split 
the byte into two nibbles, a nibble being four bits. And we convert this first into denary using our normal values, but we go one, two, four, eight for this nibble and one, two, four, eight for our left nibble. So this becomes six. This also becomes six. So the value zero, oops, sorry, that becomes seven because it's four plus two plus one is seven. And here we've got four and two. So the value zero, one, one, one and zero, one, one, zero can be codified as seven, six in hex. Let's take another example. Um, one, 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 zero, one, one zero one in binary so we'll put our bases one two four eight one two four eight and converting to hexadecimal we've got eight plus four is twelve plus two is fourteen now fourteen is represented by the letter e and this value eight plus twelve plus one is thirteen so that's represented by the letter d so this value in binary is actually this value in hex and you can also go, you know, and convert the other way. If we want to convert this into um, denary, the only difference would be, let's say, for example, you've got another value now, which is, let's say, B7. We could put our bases up, one, two, four, eight, one, two, four, eight, and convert that into binary. Well, seven is zero, one, 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 and B, as we saw previously, is represented by the number 11. So in order to write 11, we're gonna get eight, two, and one. And that would be our value in binary. Now, what is that value in denary? So a quick way to do this is actually, we can quickly change the basis into our binary basis. So we could say, this is actually eight, 16, 32, 64, 128. So if we want to work B7 out into denary, we can actually do 128 plus 32, which is 160, 176, 180, 183. Yeah, so that would equal 183. Now, is there a way of checking that that is true? Yes, there is. Remember when we said that denary is actually um, base 10 and binary is base two and hexadecimal is base 16. Well, if we put these values in B and seven, and we know that B is worth 11, and we know that seven is worth seven, and then we do our multiplication, what we can say is that one times seven is obviously seven, and 16 times 11, um, if we were to work this out long multiplication wise, one times six, one times one is one, one times one is six, one times one is one, one seven six. So you've got one seven six on this side, plus seven on this side equals 183. So actually the conversion works. And um, in your exam, I don't really want you to be working in the 16 times table. The best way to do this is to convert from binary into hex, hex into binary, um, and then going into denary. You don't really want to be doing your 16 times table. So to summarize then, our number system that we use regular every day is base 10. So you have one and 10. And the way that that actually works is for every base, we're just multiplying. So here we're doing one times three is three, six times 10 is 60, seven times 100 is 700, so that equals 763. Binary is no different, it's just that the bases are numbered and they go up in order of two. One, two, four, eight, 16, 32, 64, 128. So when we've got a value such as this, all we're doing is taking the 32, adding that to eight, adding that to four, adding that to two. There's nothing here, 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 or here. So you've got 40, 46. And then with hexadecimal, the best way to work out hexadecimal is to take our value, let's say for example, um, BC, split it into two, work out what C is. B is 11, 
c is 12 in binary c is 1100 and in binary 11 is 1011 so that would be my binary value of bc and if I want to work out what the denary value is, I would just change these bases to 16, 32, 64, 128. And we'd go to 160, 176, 184, 188. Let's just check that. 128, 150, 160, 176, 184, 188. Yeah, so those are the three different number representation formats that you'll need to use in your exam. And the reason why, um, computers use binary is because computer circuits are made up of transistors and logic gates which only have two states on and off and these can be represented in binary by one and zero that on and off is actually high current and low current passing through a wire um, but this leads to very unwieldy large numbers large binary um, numbers and so one way of shortening our binary strings is by converting them to hexadecimal and the reason why computer technicians um, computer scientists use hex or hexadecimal is um, because for every four bits in binary it can easily be converted to one digit in hex but leading to shorter codes which are a lot easier to write most of us would say that BC is easier to write than 10111100. And that's why you'll see hexadecimal in MAC addresses, um, which you'll learn about when we talk about um, networks. It's a unique identifier for your computer. I believe it stands for media access control. And that's because it's such a long number it's best to represent the binary value in hexadecimal. Hexadecimal is also used for color codes um, on websites as well. Um, and you might learn more about that if you do A-level computer science. So I hope that's useful. I hope it also contextualizes why we have certain numbering on our computer combat cards. And each of the numbers on the left, for example, here, that would be the binary equivalent. This is a hexadecimal. And once you figure out how to calculate between the two, this cheat sheet kind of becomes redundant. And these cards are available um, as a Creative Commons download and you can make them yourself. Or um, if you wish to, you can buy them as a deck, a physical deck at computercombatcards.com. I hope that was helpful um, and we'll see you next time.